Now, what is going on everyone? Today we are going to talk about NPM test and how to test, how to run tests against your uh, Dockerized Postgres application. So I just wanted to reiterate what we did. So we created like this Docker file first to build like our uh, web server, right? And uh, then we built like this Docker Compose file, which allows us to uh, start like two containers at the same time or two services like the Postgres and uh, our actual web server. And then what we did, if you recall, like in our file, um, we said, OK, we want to expose port 2345 to our host computer and port 8080 for our web server. And uh, I just marked them like in red. So internally, like they, our service is running on port 8080 and Postgres running on port 5432. That is why if this um, service wants to talk to this service, it's going to use the internal ports. Um, but if we want to access this thing from the outside world, we need to use the, the ports that are exposed to the host machine. And in that case, that's port 2345. And the main idea now is, uh, with Postgres or with Docker Compose, you can, like, you can tell Docker Compose to only start one specific container. So um, that means if you run Docker Compose up, you start the entire application. If you, uh, but you can also just start like this Postgres container. And this is exactly what we are going to do during testing. And that's the nice thing that we did uh, Docker Compose because we can just reuse it right now. And uh, we are just going to start this Postgres container and then our test runner, or then we're going to configure our app so that it will attempt to connect to port 2345 instead of 5432. And uh, like so, we can actually run our tests against the Dockerized Postgres application. And uh, I would say, let's just get started. So one thing that I want to do here is I want to create a new configuration, which I'm going to call test Docker. And um, this thing is actually going to be pretty easy um, because the only thing that we need to do is we need to say if we are in test Docker mode, so meaning we want to test against the Dockerized Postgres application, then instead of reaching out to port uh, uh, 5432, we want to reach out to port 2345. Um, oh, and I just see that I accidentally did a JS file. It, of course, must be a JSON file. Okay, so that's it. And what we also need to do is we need to allow this in our uh, node environment, uh, in our node environment. Oh, and I already see like in the initial project, I didn't remove it. So it's already there, but you probably, uh, yeah, you might need to add it or not. Depends. Okay. So now we have our test Docker environment. So what do we want to do? We want, if we go back to our initial concept, we want to run NPM test. Then we want to start up a fresh database, create all the tables, then execute all tests with this uh, test runner. And then afterwards, we're going to tear everything down. So in order to do that, um, we need to create a new script like in the package.json. So at the moment we have dev and we have test local. So which runs our tests against our uh, like database that is running on the host machine. And uh, now what we need is we need a test script, which is going to uh, do something. And now the question is, what do we actually need to do? Well, we need to start the Postgres Docker container. We need to wait for it to accept connections and then we can run all the tests. And because this is a little bit um, complicated or uh, I mean, not really complicated, but uh, like not that straightforward or it would be like quite ugly to just write this in this uh, package.json thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new directory and I'm going to call it a uh, bin uh, for binary and inside or, or for bash script, whatever. Uh, and then I'm going to create a test.sh script. And this is basically also the part uh, where I want to reference again 
this block here, this JDLM block, because that is where I got stuck, because I did have like some problems with Postgres, because it would not immediately accept connections. So we're going to see that in a second. So um, what do we want to do? We go back to our file, uh, to our uh, uh, file, and we want to do two things. So we want to say, first, I'm going to say docker compose up dash d uh, postgres. So what this means is uh, use docker compose, um, like do docker compose up, but instead of starting both containers, I only want you to start this postgres service and I want you to run in detached mode. So uh, that's just a little detail. And now uh, we have like, now I actually want to reference this little block here. Uh, where is it? It was like some bash script somewhere. Um, maybe I just oversaw it. Here, 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 uh, where is it? Ah, here it is, yeah. So I had the following problem uh, where this block helped me. So when, Postgre when the Postgres container is up, it doesn't accept connections immediately, which is kind of weird, right? Because if the container says it's up, then you would expect it to accept connections. So my problem was that the container was up and the computer is so fast that it would immediately run the tests, but the database is just up but not ready to accept connections and then all the tests would fail. And um, this little script here um, is like super handy to kind of work around this because what this is going to say is it says, oh yeah, we're going to only start like Postgres and then uh, there's this like Postgres uh, utility um, which is called pg underscore is ready and this is going to return like a boolean and if the database is not ready yet, it's going to return false. And the clever approach here is to just say, okay, I'm just going to wait until Postgres is ready, which can be like one, two seconds or so after the container is up. Uh, and then I'm going to actually do all the things that I want to do. And this is where like this blog was super helpful. So I really recommend um, going through that. So what we can just do is we can just copy these two lines and uh, yeah, just go back to our code over here and we can just paste them in here. So this says, while the Postgres database is not ready to accept connections, uh, sleep for one second uh, and do this until it's ready. And here what is going like, this is what it defines. And then it says, okay, Docker compose execute. So it says, execute like the following command inside of Postgres. So we're going to open like bash and then we're going to execute like this command here. And this actually works. So this is pretty cool. And now the only thing that we need to do is we can say um, echo running all tests. And now is our actual test script. So I'm just going to say mocha dash dash recursive uh, dash dash exit. This one is important. So that means once all tests are through, Mocha is going to exit. And then what we can just do is we can just say tearing down all containers. And um, then I'm going to say Docker compose down uh, dash V. So we also want to remove the uh, volumes and then remove uh, uh, remove orphans if we have any. So I just typically do the uh, use like this remove orphans to to get rid of them to get rid of them all. Cool. So that's it pretty much for this bash script. Now the only thing we still need to do is we need to actually run this or we need to actually make this work inside our test script. And to make this work, um, what we need to do is we need to do two things. So for one, we since this is like a new binary script, we need to give this thing um, execute permissions. And the way this works in Linux is you say chmod, so, and then plus x, which means give this file execute permissions. And then I'm going to give uh, the 
test.sh script execute permissions. And then I'm going to say, OK, now that you have execute permissions, I want you to first set this environment variable, node environment test docker, which, by the way, has the effect that um, we are trying to connect to the database on port 2345 instead of 5432. And then what is left to do is we can just say dot bin test dot sh. And that's it. That's really it. So that means this should work. So I just want to test two things, OK? I want to go to, um, or you want to go to your local database, like on your host machine. And I'm going to truncate like the developer uh, table. OK, so now it's gone. And now I'm going to run npm run test local. And that should now work. Okay, so this is just, we are creating like one user. Okay, fine. And now I'm just going to run npm test. So let's see what happens. So this is actually the thing that is going to use Docker Compose to spin up the database on the fly, create the tables, execute all the tests, and then afterwards uh, tear the entire database down. Okay, so here we see we have like some issue. And the question is like, what is the issue? 500? Ah, <laughs> yeah, you know why? Because um, again, I did not do Docker Compose down. So I'm just going to say Docker Compose down. Uh, oops, down. Because that's the issue I mentioned before. So um, if you don't do Docker Compose down, it's just going to stop the container. And then if you execute test, it's going to just start the container again. And then um, it's not going to work because the data is already there, so to say. And that is, by the way, also the reason why we do Docker Compose down here at the end. So we basically make sure that we clean up our stuff. Um, so that's like the only thing. But I've all, I will also put this inside of the readme. So you will have like all the information there. So maybe if you don't want to watch the entire series, you can just like check out the code and, and copy like all of these uh, things. And bam, nice. Ah, do you see that? This is so cool. Like we're spinning up like with Postgres database on the fly. Then we are creating like the tables. Then we are running all tests and then we're tearing everything down. Nice. So that's it pretty much. Yes, I think we did it. So if we now look at the acceptance criteria, Yes, npm tests behaves exactly as described above. We can run our test against a local database. Docker Compose up will start this entire thing, including like a Dockerized database and our web app. Yes, and we'd run on a non-default port to not collide with a local Postgres instance. Um, that is also true. So if I wait, just going to show you like my terminal and I'm going to say uh, brew services ls. So you see, I'm, I'm currently running like some Postgres locally and it did not collide. So this is super handy because it's super annoying. Just imagine you check this repo out, you try to run it and this thing doesn't work. Okay, nice. So that's it pretty much, guys. Thank you very much uh, for sticking around. Thank you very much for following along. Uh, please give the video a thumbs up. Please check out like this blog that I referenced uh, for this nice solution for having Postgres wait until uh, the uh, Postgres is ready to or for waiting until Postgres accepts connections. Uh, if you have a question, leave me a comment. Uh, you can also reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter handle is at production coder. And I've also put a link in the email description down below. So if you guys want to have a say in what we build next on this channel, um, you can do so by signing up for this email list. And every once in a while, I'm going to send an email along. So again, guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.